Welcome to The Racket, silencing the noise in your business. I'm Pam Foley. And I'm Paige Weiss. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. And I am so excited about this episode, Paige. I have to tell you because this is the first in a series of episodes when we start talking about digital marketing. Because even in my business, and I'm not a digital marketer, people come up to me all the time and they ask me about it. And everybody is so confused about social media and how to use it and how to use it for their personal and their business and how it combines or does it. I even had a question today about it. Oh, yeah. I should probably just send them to you. Who are we kidding? (laughs) (laughs) It's one of those that there is so much noise and racket around social media that people feel I must be in it but right. then they also expect I'm, so that means then if I'm active in it I'm gonna get millions of followers they so see it like they see it on TV and they right. see it on social media and so <laughs> right. then, then it often they're like now they're super frustrated because social media isn't working for them and so what we have to do is figure out how do we actually make social media work? And that's the piece that I start to get excited about today in our topic because I think, yes, it can. We just have to talk about how and why. Again, expectations of what you're wanting dang to get it. out Still of. Dang it, still dang it. Set those expectations, I tell you, I tell you. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be getting into today and I'm really excited. Me too, I think it's so fun that we're both excited about this subject, but it's because you know so much and you want to tell our listeners about it and I know so little and I kind of want to learn and I think I'm like a lot of our listeners, like Paige, Perfect. help, it's head exploding. So. It's always great. Then we get great examples during the show and right? questions that come up, so it should hopefully be a really good one for the listeners. I think so. So getting started with our word of the day. So our word of the day is seen and it's kind different of- Different than awareness. Different than awareness because awareness is people know you exist. Seeing is they really see you and they understand that you have a good reputation, that they recognize your business, they recognize more than you just exist. It's Mm -hmm. deeper than that. And really, when you're seeing, it's about branding, it's about all of it. And I know we're gonna talk about that you do all of that on social media, but, but it's about building the reputation for yourself and for your business. And you have to be really careful about that because as hard as it is to get social media to get to sales, or maybe it's just about knowing things, but, but well. getting to sales, it's also super easy to change that reputation and make it negative with a minimal amount of bad reviews or, you know, Wrong party videos or, or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, and you do a fantastic job of getting seen. I know you. that when I'm following on Facebook, you're doing those videos in the Facebook Live consistently, and that's a lot of what has helped you get to so many followers because you you keep being seen right in front of me. Every like I don't even know what days you do it. I just feel like every time I'm on there, there right she there, is. I'm doing another video. <laughs> you know, but what is it doing? It is keeping your name in front of me more and more and more. And the goal is to be doing that to your target audience. And so that, but if you're not posting, then no one's going to be seeing you. They're not going to see you and they're not going to understand you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference between the awareness that we were talking about and the really being seen. And I I also kind of think it's the difference between, I'm going to call it old school marketing, even though I know that's not totally (laughs) true because it's still effective, but kind of that non-digital person to person shaking your hand right. and you brownies kind of marketing that's awareness that you exist mm-hmm. really getting seen i think is something that we can do online because we can be vulnerable and we have this talking time to people but that said let's put this in the question list from our readers or our listeners but really me um, it's about speed because people move so quickly through scrolling and how much time do you really take? I think there's so many questions to well, be answered. That's why you try to keep your videos to about a minute. I right? do, yeah, I even call them one minute tips because people, I don't pay attention much more than a minute and I don't think anybody, I don't think I'm unique. Mm-hmm. So no, so it's really important to get them hooked, get them in, get them listening and get them moving right back on because 
They're just trying to scroll and keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> so that leads me to the very first question of our social media topic. And it's really gonna be about Paige's information this time, but um, so Paige, do I have to be on social media? It completely depends on the business. I think depending on what industry you are in is going to depend on what social platform you should be on. I think that in today's society, having some sort of online presence is very helpful. And having those like Facebook platforms or having um, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever it is, can be helpful to really build the brand, especially if you're... I mean, you could even say a big, large corporation, but for our listeners, it helps build the uniqueness and the individualized service that the client and your customer is paying for by choosing you. Or kind of the place that people can get to know you. Yeah, so it really starts to build the trust and starts oh. to sit with them of, wow, Pam is the one doing these videos every day. I want to work with Pam because I like her personality or I see how much she knows so I want to work with Pam and it starts to build this I can actually get in touch with the person that's doing this if something happened and so that makes them a little more ready to pull the trigger and use you in that process where and that's where I say you'll want you'll see a lot of large corporations do they need to be on Facebook not really because we all know who they are anyway. We know who they are. They're not trying to be seen. However, if they can have fun and connect with their users and they can build that personality and they can be available, what do you see happening more and more with social media? That live chat or like the chat and the messenger. Oh, yeah. How long until they respond? And so large corporations will make sure that that response time is minimal. So it's like, boom, you have a question, you can instantly get in touch with us. So maybe is it that we're all using large corporations is it that we're all already aware that they exist mm -hmm. but now we're seeing them and they're being seen in a different way yeah like a little more or human I've seen or two. alive i don't know yeah, like yeah. With twitter they'll reach out and like oh twitter i've got Boy, a question <laughs> blah, blah, blah. i'm the one that i've really been using a lot more lately is tsa will actually respond on twitter to questions you may have and oh. so, for example, you mean airport TSA? Airport TSA. So, for example, I was like, I know that I can take an empty water bottle, and I know I can fill up a water bottle on the other side of TSA. Yes. But I like ice, and I like cold water. So I went and I googled first. Can I take ice through TSA? What did we do before Google? I know. <laughs> and what was my response? I saw Twitter pop up with TA, TSA's response that said you can take ice through security. What? So even big companies like that, that's kind of that's where the you government. Can, you can stay in touch, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can stay in touch and start to build more of a, you know what? Everyone seems you know get so frustrated going through TSA. But they're building this really kind, nice reputation on the other side through social media. So now they're starting to lighten that load a little bit of, I don't dislike them because they helped me get through this. And right. so it's building that relationship back up because they're so far disconnected being such like large pieces. But let's take that back to the small entrepreneur and startups and you know local businesses of how can you get in front of and help your clients answer these questions that they have or be seen when people are using it. So there's reasons that you'd still use social media. It's so, again, the right platform for the right. For right, the and we're definitely gonna talk about that today and through the next few episodes, but I guess the answer to the question is, yeah, you yeah. do need to be on some level on social media, no matter what business you're in. For sure. Because it's just the world we live in mm -hmm. and everybody has a phone in their hand. We have iPads and phones and computers as we sit here, <laughs> and a big TV behind us. I know, right? <laughs> we still have a whiteboard, though. Right? We do still have a whiteboard in case the off chance we want to write something. <laughs> and so I really think that you just have to have that online presence. Well, the other piece, too, with it is when you do a Google search and you're searching for a business or more information about them, obviously the businesses, or hopefully, the business's website will show up. Right. But below that tends to be something like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, oh. because they're ranking so high. And so the user may just be more of a Facebook user, let's say. If that's the case, then they're gonna go check out your Facebook. 
See how don't they have a are. billion users? Oh, I'm sure. I don't even know what the it's some crazy number total is. Yeah. But yeah. And so if you're not active on Facebook consistently, they may be like, why hasn't this company posted since 2014? Are they still in business? Oh. Are they responsive? So it develops a reputation, kind of everything we've been talking about in marketing, mm -hmm. but you can develop a reputation through lack of social media as much as you can through For doing sure. it. And then the other is the reputation, like you were talking about, is Facebook and you know all these other platforms all have their own review system. And so the reviews, the stars, show up in the search engines. And so making sure that you are generating good positive reviews in those areas, because just doing a simple search for the business, what, you know, like, oh, my friend told me to go check out this company, so I'm gonna go do a Google search, is where they're gonna go. And so to see those stars on these different platforms, or they go to Facebook and they see, oh my gosh, they've been active and they're posting relevant content, or one thing we learned, because I was trying to do more with our business, we put our portfolio on Instagram. Oh. And I usually send that link out to our clients to say, hey, and you can view our portfolio here because it's just an easier space to add. Right. Yeah, because you have such website. a visual business. Yeah. Well, I went to go look at our competitors and see what others were doing. No one's got their portfolio. It's all about the team. It's all about the culture. It's all about the oh. environment of the team. And so one, it made me go, maybe we've been doing it wrong. Or two, it's building that, hey, here's who you're gonna work with. This it's is knowing your goal and building that relationship of we're a fun company, do you wanna come work with us? Yeah. And so you see there's a lot of other underlining things that are happening with social media that you may not see the immediate return on investment from some of these efforts. However, you're really setting up what is the culture, what is it like to work with you? What is this that you're that the potential customer, client, whatever is getting into? And who are you? And who are you? So yeah, absolutely. I think that you should be on it, and you know, find out what's right for you, or work with a social media expert to figure out what that plan is. And we'll talk more about that in another episode. Yes, but make sure it's something that you're at least staying active on the right platforms, which leads us to where we're going now and a couple of the different main platforms that are out there and how they work. Yes, so for this episode, just so um, listeners can kind of follow along, in this episode, we're gonna talk about several of the different platforms that are out there and what they are and who is on them. And then, this is the cool part, we are gonna break down and I promise it's coming, we're gonna have a whole episode on Facebook and a whole episode on Instagram, we're going to talk about There's LinkedIn and Twitter. For one episode. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. I think we'll probably skip over Snapchat unless we figure out that a lot of our listeners are teenagers because I think that's who's on that. And if you want more information on Snapchat, Snapchat drop us some information because we can definitely go into it if it can be a business tool. It's just one that's still right on the cusp of breaking out into a business. Oh, tool. okay, mind blown. <laughs> to, compared to just staying yeah up with the younger ones and so if it's something that our listeners are interested in we'll definitely uh, do an episode in that yeah, we will. Snapchat too. okay so. i'll have tons to learn on that one <laughs> so okay so let's talk about the very first step and the very first step i think that our listeners or any entrepreneurs should take is starting to think about choosing what platform works best for your message. Mm -hmm. So what are the very first questions that, before they know anything about any platform, what are the very first questions that our listeners should start to consider when they start to think about, should I be on social media? I re the biggest one is just demographic. Each of the platforms that are out there, there's a reason there's several social media platforms. It's because they all have a different demographic and who you're hitting and a different way of presenting information. As like from the way that Facebook is more news feed and content based, Instagram is more photo based and, and keywords, if you will, that's really what hashtags are at the end of the day is keywords. LinkedIn is more business professionals. Twitter, I always say is more pop culture. And then there's other ones that are very specific to industries. I know Goodreads is out there for yeah. authors. Um, you know, there's there's other platforms like Avo for lawyers. You've got, um, you can help me with the one for real estate agents that's out there that creates them. Oh, mm. we're spacing. You would think I would know that. I know. <laughs> uh, it's not as 
Maybe it is Zillow. Well, that Zillow leave, does. Yeah, that you, leave you can leave for. reviews on Zillow. So there's so many different platforms, and that's where it matters. Of uh, as a real estate agent, staying more apparent, like um, oh, visible in Zillow, where your target audience is, is probably going to be a little bit better than say LinkedIn. Right. But if I you're doing that. commercial real estate, then going into LinkedIn and having a stronger presence there might be more important. And so it really comes down to who is actually on the platform that you're looking for. So I guess, really, when I'm starting out, because I need to know who's on the platform, and I definitely want to talk about that, I really, it goes back to, I need to understand who my Target. ideal client mm -hmm. is, right? Who I'm targeting. and. Also, I need to understand what my goal is, right? What are yeah? What are you? Because you were just saying about commercial, this. you know, selling to a business versus selling mm -hmm. to an individual. Instagram doesn't allow links, except for in your bio, and so if you're trying, like, it doesn't make sense for us to put every blog article and link to it on Instagram because you're just going to go to our homepage. Uh, Unless I, for some reason, decide to change the bio link every time we put one out. However, others will go in and say, I'm running a promotion or a campaign or whatever. And so they will change the bio link and everything that they're doing is go up to the bio link and you know, purchase it. But it just, again, doesn't make sense then to be using it for things that are requiring different links on a consistent basis. Like multiple steps. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's, um, maybe we should go to break and come back and we'll talk about what um, each one of these platforms, who Great. they are and what they do. And there's so many, it's exciting. All right, let's take our break and we'll be back in a minute. Hey everyone, this is Kyle with Outdoor Mindset. We are an outdoor focused community for people affected by neurological challenges, both diagnosed individuals as well as their supporters. And we believe strongly in the positive power of the outdoors and community and strive to enhance quality of life through a common passion for the outdoors. We do this through regional outdoor meetup groups, our adventure scholarships, and the connections made within the outdoor mindset community. So if you've been diagnosed with a neurological challenge or you know someone who has, we welcome you to join our community at outdoormindset.org and follow along on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I hope to see you all outdoors very soon. All right, welcome back. We are continuing our conversation on social media and learning a little bit more about right now just the differences in the platforms and how to choose the right platform. Next, yes. we'll go into next episodes. We'll start to break down each one individually and how to really maximize it for your needs. Yes, but before we can do that, we really need to understand what each one of them is about and why we would choose that because like anything that we've talked about in past episodes you just can't choose everything and no. it doesn't make sense and that's where so many of our clients get frustrated and they're just like i can't like i can't keep up with all of them and i always say don't you don't right. need to but again all the racket and chaos out there is telling you you must be on social and so they what just feel that like mean? that means all of it and so we really want to break down and how to choose the right platform or platforms Yes, so um, let's get started on that. Um, how about we start with the big elephant in the room, <laughs> right? The one that all of us know, I think, I didn't, I should have Googled it, right? But I think there are over a billion users on Facebook. So Paige, who is on Facebook and what, what does a business do on Facebook? Absolutely. And we'll go further in later. This is really just who's on Facebook who's on? and why. When they first came out, it was very much the college kids going, you know, into a little bit older. So I guess what is that, like 18 to 25 or so? Wow, really? It was a super young demographic, and a lot of it was just staying in touch with their friends, sharing photos, all this stuff. Well, then it turned into be a place to connect, and so then more and more of the parents started to join. And there was ways that they could be like, oh, I get to see my grandkids, you know, through the Facebook and through all of this. And so over time, it's really shifted to a, a older demographic. I say older, meaning more like 35 to 55. Right. Um, because we've seen a lot of the younger ones jump off of it, switch into more Instagram and or, as you mentioned earlier, Snapchat. And so... <laughs> When we look at that, that's one thing we want to look at for a business is that it is a shifting demographic in terms of age. 
And then the other piece though is that Facebook is much more for like business to consumers. Those that are trying to get in front of the consumers and show them their product or their service or how they can help and that type of um, marketing, if you're gonna be doing marketing, the main reason that I would say businesses should be on it is a little bit of what we talked about before the break of being able to build a little bit of that reputation, keeping the potential clients and the customers up to date on we are active, we are still around, we do care. And then the second piece of that is a lot of people and Facebook has even adapted to it are asking for recommendations and referrals. Why are they doing it on Facebook? Because they're asking the people they know, like, and trust. They're asking their friends and families and, and now their neighbors. Who have you used for this service? Who do you recommend? Because they'd rather go with someone that's recommended than try to do a Google search. And that is true. I do see recommendations when I'm on Facebook a lot now. Mm -hmm. Now so that they, you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. So it's important that while you may not be using it a lot, that you're there if someone gives you that recommendation. So if someone's like, hey, anybody know of a good pr uh, painter in the area? And someone tags you, if you A, don't have very good reviews, probably not gonna get that recommendation, right? <laughs> right. They're probably not gonna call you. B, if you don't have a complete profile, they're probably not gonna use you. And C, if you're not posting anything or they show up and your page looks like crap, they're probably not gonna use you. So you've got a lead sitting in front of you but you, because you aren't taking care of the social media side within Facebook, you may lose that business. The thing I hate is when someone's like, yeah, call John, here's their phone number. Why not just, oh, John doesn't have a Facebook profile. So are you gonna choose John, who you have to randomly call and have no idea what business he's with, or are you gonna call this other company over here that's got a fully built out Facebook page, oh, great it's recommendations, reputation. And easy to contact their details, whether it be visiting their website first or whether it be calling them straight from using Messenger. So again, it starts to really build that trust when someone refers you out, even if you're not that active on it. But just having the nice presence is good. And I always think of Facebook, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I always think of Facebook as the place where when I'm posting, it's professional, it's not that I'm not professional, but it's much more casual and I can be more real and human mm -hmm. and goofy if Which I need to be yeah. on Facebook that I might not on some of the other ones that we're gonna talk about. It allows you is to that build that personality. Of, yep. Cool. So let's um so being casual <laughs> and all of that, let's take it into Instagram, which is I think owned by Facebook yep. now, right? Yep. And so it's kind of a part of it, but another really big social media platform. Oh, one that is just growing like crazy. And you know, the way, again, this Instagram now is a bit younger demographic, probably back to that college to 35 year old is what's on it. And don't get me wrong, obviously there's a lot of ages on all of them, but if we're really looking at the core, it comes down to that. And the reason is, is it's, a place that is much more visual and a, honestly a place that the parents haven't gotten to yet so it allows the kids <laughs> to keep posting those photos. I also know a lot of the, them are done posting an entire album. They just want to post that one amazing photo. Right. And so it's a little bit more like that. But people go to Instagram for trends and people go to Instagram for new products and people go to Instagram for a lot of that influence. And so it's something that I say it's great to at least have some sort of presence on there because if nothing else, your image or your logo continues to just show up in their feed. That I've, I've heard, I have totally heard that businesses have gotten new business off of Instagram. Mm -hmm. I do know day in and day out, e-commerce ones can definitely sell products on both Facebook and Instagram. So, you know, those are still good spots to be putting in advertising if you are in those areas. However, I do find for like a local service industry, it's a lot harder to get a new sale or a new lead off of it. It's better for, I always say just the awareness piece, being seen, mm -hmm. being making, seen. Sure, making sure that it's one more place that your logo pops up that if someone said, hey, go use this company, you're like, 
I think I've heard of them before. All right, I'll go look into them. And it's just a little bit more of justifying why you would go look into them deeper. I love that. And I think that is true because I am not in college, but I do <laughs> scroll through Instagram and um, it's true. I mean, it's just pretty pictures a mm -hmm. lot of the time. And I guess I haven't really ever thought of shopping from there, but it's not to say I couldn't be influenced by that. It's also advertising. Advertising that people don't have to know about you to find you. On Facebook, they pretty much have to be looking for you or referred to you to really be found. I don't see a lot of people searching for like hairdressers, Denver on Facebook and seeing oh. a list of like businesses. Again, not saying that they don't, right? but I also know there's a lot of hairdressers on Instagram being followed because they're posting all the different styles, cuts, right, and views, it's such a visual coloring. business. It's and because someone that's interested in that, like I know I'm following one that's like for pixie haircuts to always just like, what's going on? What might be a different haircut? What's trending? You know, so I'm following hashtag pixie haircuts. Oh, I should do that. There you Paige go. and I both have short hair. <laughs> and so, but I don't have to know this business, but if I keep seeing a hairstylist pop up and they happen to be local, then I might want to go check them out. Yeah. But I didn't know about the business before I started. So that's the reason too, that people are using it more and why I say it's a good place to be seen because they don't have to know you. To right, at least you. they're aware you exist. Mm -hmm. So then talking about businesses, let's go to LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is really business to business. It's right? a lot more business to business. Why? Because it really is that, pro it's, it's your resume online. Oh, okay, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah, so yeah. because it's your resume online, it's a good way to find power partners who is someone that does, you know, um, who does printing. That might be a good power partner for us because they don't necessarily cross into the digital world and we don't cross into the printing. World. Yeah. And so there's a place that we could potentially send business back and forth. And so I might go to LinkedIn just to see who are local printers. And because of the way that the networks are built, you can see who you have in common. So I know like because you and I are um, follow each other or whatever they call it. Right. Right. <laughs> We're connected on the LinkedIn that when I go and look at someone else's profile, it might say you and Pam Foley are right. Are a, a mutual connection. So this way there's two ways you can go about it then. Hey Pam, I see that you know so and so. Do you mind introducing me? And this is what I'm thinking. So back to the cold call versus soft call that we were talking about right. earlier. Now there's at least a soft introduction. And now you start to be able to use it that way. And a warm introduction is always better. Always better. You can see a little bit more about what they might be into. Wait, you know, how do you make that soft introduction? And then second of all, though, we can, you know, advertise on there. But if you're selling software as a solution, if you're selling services like business insurance or, um, you know, like HR services or whatever that really need to get in front of decision makers at businesses, looking on LinkedIn to find out who some of those people might be, who you have in common, and sending an email out that way can definitely be a way that, like a business to business, um, business, can uh, do, you know, more marketing and use it. So while LinkedIn isn't necessarily a platform that you're gonna go to to promote your new t-shirt company it, you know it might be a place you go to for suits and tuxes though because that's your target audience are typically business people that are needing to dress nicely and show up to i have heard of stylists that do really well there mm -hmm. but let's um i don't want our episode to go too I long know, and there are so many choices so <laughs> um i know there are a few more that we definitely want to talk about just even this baby size touch before we go in depth so what about, okay, everybody knows what Twitter is. You can't, you cannot, unless you live under a rock, know what Twitter is. Um, is that good for business? Or is it only good for politics? <laughs> uh, I am, I've usually been more one to say that it's better for pop culture, politics. Okay. Um, those that are having a very heavy influence in the, in the, social realm, if you will. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of newspaper sites are on there, like yeah. you know, political things. Uh, like I said, it's a good way to quickly communicate. However, 
I haven't had great success with Twitter as a business. Um, it might, it's better if you're going to a conference oh, and you okay. want to promote the fact and say, hey, you know, tweet that you're here and you have your own specific hashtag that you want to use for it and drum up business like that. But then again, I go back and that's a very much a social impact right. that you're having. And so it doesn't hurt for a business to be on Twitter. And unless you have a very strong campaign around it, though, I wouldn't spend a lot of time. Same thing. Your target audience isn't going to be reaching out to find you and like leave you questions that way. It's usually like the big corporations. It's usually those that are having a social impact. And being a part of a conversation and discussion uh, is really where I see Twitter. I, I'm sure others will say other things, but I don't see it as so much of a business. Yeah, Twitter. and put us in, put it in the comments if you have <laughs> other thoughts. But that leads me to Pinterest, because is it sort of the same that Pinterest is? Um, it's not that you're a social impact, but it's kind of the same thing. Is that business oriented? Or maybe it is more it, than I think it is. It depends on the business that you're in. If oh. you are running um, a do-it-yourself site, I would say Pinterest is probably a lot better for bloggers. Oh, okay. So usually, like those that have a bunch of recipes, or it could so help and you know, fitness, nutrition, all oh, of that, that makes history. total sense. Could yeah. gain some exposure because it's a lot of people looking for the do-it-yourself. What's a good shake? What's a good diet? What's a good meal plan? What's a good this? What's a good workout to you know drop weight here? What? How does this work? And so all of that, those stems from that blogging platform. Okay. And you've got one solid image that hooks them in. They click through. They go back to your website, read your blog article, and learn more about you. So that's one way to go about it. And like I said, that could be health and fitness. That could be do it yourself. Um, Everything, weddings and events and exactly. Food. There's so much. It's one of those though to be very cautious because being a do-it-yourself platform, they're probably not looking to hire you. Oh. They're looking to utilize your knowledge and how to make something work. Or they're looking for your ideas so they can do it yourself and implement on their end. That's an interesting and so, thing about their demographic. For sure. I know yeah. but We've also seen clothing can have a great place. So oh. like, let me take, you know, again, they're looking for fashion ideas, style trends, what's in this year for spring 2019. So then those ones can go all the way back to a certain um, page on a website that has that product or shirt or whatever it is available to purchase. So I don't want to say it's all do it yourself and that, it, you know, like they're not going to buy from you. It's great for exposure. It's great for awareness. Yes. However, it again, it really has to be the right industry. I see a lot more for blogging sites, which yeah, if you're making money off of affiliate marketing, which we can talk about in a different episode, or you're making money off of um, you know selling some sort of do-it-yourself plan or whatever it is, then it's a great, great platform. Perfect. And um, lastly, although I know there are a million more, we're and just going to call it other. Um, before we get to other, lastly, I read that YouTube is the second largest search engine in the Absolutely. world. So what's your thought, quick thought, because we are so out of time. What's your quick thought, Paige, super fast on YouTube? I mean, there's a reason that we're doing our podcast, which is an audio only thing, and we're posting it on YouTube, right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really is definitely a platform where Google, because Google owns YouTube, is going to place a couple items in the search, and then if there's enough videos that are related to that topic, it'll start to display the videos up higher in the search results. Oh. And so it can be very helpful for that. Um, anytime that you can get that interaction and see more about the, how a person works, operates, what you might be expecting when you work with them, and the videos, those are very helpful. Videos, I, you probably know this guys better than I do, are so I would say like at least 10 times more powerful. Oh, at image. least, yes. And so having, yes, video can be expensive, but having that video integrated into your marketing effort, if you're going to have a video created, put it on YouTube. Use it. If you're going to be, you know, doing short how-to tutorials on something, post them on YouTube, optimize them. I think the problem 
that a lot of businesses run into with YouTube is A, they're too scared to get in front of a camera. Right. Like, God, this one's really far away. Yeah, right. Um, We're very small. <laughs> second of all, they don't know how to optimize it. So they throw the video up, they just put in a simple title, and then they walk away. Which is why we're having an episode on things oh, like YouTube. You. <laughs> yes. He <laughs> wants to optimize it for the search engines, mm -hmm. fill in the descriptions, fill in the tags, all the good stuff will go into another episode. But again, if done properly, oh, for sure YouTube is a great platform for you. If you're going to put a video on Facebook, put it on YouTube. It's literally what I say across the board all the time is if you're going to do it on a video format, you should be using it. If nothing else, it's quick 30 second commercials and it's something that is going to help you in the long run with the search engines to get more exposure and be seen. Awesome. Well, I think this has been an amazing um, episode and it's just the smallest amount of a teaser of all of the things we're going to talk about and that's not even getting to all of them. All so of them. we'll have to take some time in another episode just to say what exists. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Same thing. There'll probably be like five more. Forms that you'd like to learn more about or would like us to answer questions on, feel free to drop that in the comments and engage with us. We'd be happy to talk more about specific platforms and what your needs are compared to such a broad. Yeah. So stay tuned for next time because our very first one is jumping into Facebook. And oh, um, I know there's a lot to learn there, but thanks for joining us. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear from you. Check us out at theracketshow.com to submit suggestions for topics or guests that you would like to hear. And of course, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time.